All right, you know what time it is. Earth disaster cycle, magnetic pole shift, time to answer some of your questions. The first question we get is, how did we know that the Earth's rotation was going to speed up? For those of you who don't know, in 2020, Earth broke its record fastest rotation 28 times. Overall, in 2020, it was the fastest year on record. We broke that again last year. We're well on our way to breaking that again this year, and we have broken the fastest single day record. But how we knew this was going to happen, this is what we would expect to happen. Uh, the way Earth uh, rotates, the way it moves, the way it exists in this electrical environment around the sun, with Earth's magnetic field fading, with the introduction of the galactic current sheet, bringing with it the galactic magnetic reversal, we would expect more energy to enter the system, uh, just, like, uh, just like a motor that runs on electric current. You put more uh, juice into the system, which is what's happening as we lose the magnetic shield protecting us, and uh, we would expect to speed up, and I don't exactly expect that to stop anytime soon. Does the micronova equal the days of tribulation in the Bible? Um, Yes, basically, but not just the Bible. This is in almost every religious story in tons of mythologies. And from a specifically scientific point of view, um, the things that they all describe, and they all have very many things in common, even while they are all unique and uh, their own thing, so to speak, that is basically what we're looking at with the Micronova. It should uh, include a couple days of darkness. It should include fire raining from the sky, basically. Uh, phenomenal sights. Uh, as the Earth does its tilt, uh, the sky will appear to uh, lose about a third of its stars from where you're viewing just based on how much the Earth tilts. Stars you could see before would not be visible then. Um, essentially, yes. Uh, if you are uh, big into that aspect of it, everything goes by the Bible, I would have to say yes. Uh, there are several other religious text that you could fall into there. If you're purely scientific with it, this falls into the same kind of category. And it's things like this that really have to make you wonder how much of this is actually historical accounts of the last disaster versus just somebody getting an idea in their head or a message from God, something like that. Why don't we get official updates anymore on the weakening of Earth's magnetic field? Uh, it's very much purposeful. Uh, once they upgraded us from 10% lost in 20, uh, in the year 2000 to 15% down in 2010, there was very much a fervor on the internet. People started doing the math, myself included, and there were a lot of people saying, hey, wait a minute, it's looking like we're only, you know, 10, 15, 20, maybe 25 years at most away from actually getting into the, and having the, the zenith of this magnetic excursion. It was actually around that time that we started beginning to interact with some professors from folks from NASA uh, and one individual from the European Space Agency's SWARM mission, which uh, is monitoring Earth's magnetic field, that they basically said they were not going to be giving us any more updates on this. They, of course, had to update the magnetic pole movement, and they are doing that. This is for GPS purposes and other things like that, but... I don't think we're going to be getting any more updates on the field strength, and that is very much on purpose. Panic is uh, not what they want, and frankly, not what we want either. Do we as a species subconsciously remember the disasters in dreams and visions and other things like that? I have to say yes, and this does sort of tie back into the religious aspect, but for those of you who know who Carl Jung is, uh, the eminent psychoanalyst, he noticed this and actually documented how all across the world and throughout time, people were having the same kind of visions of what was going to happen, the same kinds of dreams about what was going to happen. Now, he, I believe incorrectly, believed that this was just part of the human condition. Something about how our brain was wired caused us all to have the same kinds of ideas, but I don't think that's correct. I really do think that you know, given the coherence between these dreams, these visions, things like that, and what is scientifically, from a physics standpoint, expected to happen, it's almost like this is imprinted in our DNA, in our subconscious, sort of like an ancestral memory sort of thing. Um, it's another one of those things I'm starting to understand a little bit more after I spent most of my life not believing a single word of it. 
Um, last question I'm going to get to today. When do we start planting after the disaster to grow food and start rebuilding everything? This one's hard because we don't know how bad the weather's going to be and for how long. Uh, we don't know what the magnetic situation is going to be. This question was actually asked in the comment section and there was a fantastic answer given to it by someone else. Stagger it. So let's say you've got a thousand seeds for tomato plants. Plant 10. Then two weeks later, plant 10 more. 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 And this is going to be part of the relearning of the seasonal cycles, of the climate cycles that we can actually work with. And that may actually have to be done several times because what the aftermath looks like for about two or three years might not be what it looks like 10 years later, might not be what it looks like 100 years later. And so the best answer for that is make sure you have a good stock and then stagger that planting in the aftermath so you can actually um, make sure you can hit whatever good window actually exists there. Uh, one more thing uh, I want to mention, we've been talking about this uh, in some of the Q&As and I've mentioned it on Facebook several times about emotional prepping. The fact that the moment the sun has its micronova, every single trauma you have is coming back and it will send you into a panic. It will make you utterly useless if you're not prepared to deal with it. And this isn't just sitting there and running through the scenarios in your head so that you're not a deer in headlights, but you have to take care of the emotional, spiritual, psychological, mental part of this as well. Uh, I've spent a couple of days with an individual who is really, really good at helping people like me who are not traditionally into things like that really get into it. If you'll recall from the last time we discussed this, I'll, I'll be the first to admit to you, I let my pride, my ego, a bit of arrogance, the notion I don't need any help, uh, stuff like that get in the way of me doing what I needed to be done for several years in terms of working on myself. I can't believe the leaps that can be taken when you have somebody who really knows what they're doing, uh, not just in terms of what's many of you would call light work or energy work, uh, but overall basic healing of past traumas, things like that. And it just so happens uh, she's an expert on some pretty interesting megaliths as well, including one that she has a book on, um, a megalith I had never heard of before. And uh, put it this way, it puts Stonehenge to shame. Uh, I'll put a link to some of her stuff below the video. Keep those questions coming in at suspiciousobservers.org, and I will see you in the morning. Be safe, everyone.